Okay, so we are starting our unit on cells and how living things are organized. And today, your essential question is, how do you tell if something is living? So what we're going to be looking at is looking at uh, living things, how do we classify them, and how do we know that they are living? Okay, so our learning target for today is, uh, it's learning target five, we need to be able to list and apply the requirements needed in order to classify something as living. So you're going to be able, after taking the notes and practice, you're going to be able to look at different things and be able to classify and tell whether they are living or not. Okay, now, in order to uh, take notes today, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do a PowerPoint presentation. The PowerPoint presentation is on my website so that you can get to it from there as well. Um. Okay, so the PowerPoint presentation is again on the website so you guys can um, open that up if you uh, miss some of the notes uh, to write down. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about is how living things are organized. And living things are organized uh, basically with cells. All living things are composed of cells. So if something is living, it's always going to have cells. If it does not contain cells, then it cannot be classified as living. Okay, cells are considered the basic unit of structure and function. So they're the basic part of a living thing. Everything builds off of a cell of a living thing. Okay. Just to give you an idea, structure is the way something is made. Function is the job that it performs. So, I'm sorry, function is the job it performs. We will get into those a little bit later in um, our notes so you guys can understand what those are a little bit later. Okay, all living things are also composed of chemicals. So inside cells of living things, there are chemicals. Okay, the most abundant chemical in our cells is water. Okay. And uh, some other uh, chemicals that are in cells, carbohydrates, which are made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. They're compounds, okay? They're the main source of energy. You get that from your food. Those carbohydrates go into your cells, okay? Proteins and lymphids, which you also get through your foods. Proteins um, are building blocks. They help build parts and repair parts of cells. Lymphids are pretty much fats. They do, they do similar things to proteins. And then nucleic acids are also chemicals. They are the genetic material that direct your cell's activities. Okay, the next thing that um, all living things have is all, inner, all living things use energy. Okay, most of an organism's energy comes from sun. When, I, when we're talking about that, we're talking about plants. Okay, cells use energy to grow and repair. Okay, another characteristic of living things is that all living things will grow and develop. So growth means to become larger. Development means the process of change to produce a complex organism. So all living things will grow and develop. Okay, all living things also respond to their surroundings. So a stimulus is a change that causes an organism to react. A response is the action or behavior in response to that change. So for example, you guys have probably had this happen to you a lot of times. A loud noise might cause you to jump. The loud noise is the stimulus. The response is your action, you jumping to that stimuli. Okay, all living things also reproduce. So reproduction just means that you're producing an offspring that's similar to the parents. So all living things are able to reproduce so that they can continue their species. Now, the last thing we're going to talk about is just some needs of living things. So what do living things need in order to survive? Well, number one, they need energy. If you're an otter trough, you can make your own food. So we're talking about plants. Certain types of bacteria can also make their own food. Okay, heterotrophs cannot make their own food. So that would be us, humans, 
other types of animals, we have to rely on consuming um, our food from other living things. Okay, all living things need water. Again, oops, let me go back. Again, um, that is the most important chemical that is in our cells so that we have to have water, so all living things need that. All living things need living space, so we need a shelter. Okay, we need some place that we can be protected from the elements. And that shelter is also a place where we can store our food and water. Okay, living things also need a what we call a stable internal environment or conditions. It's called homeostasis. What that means is that, especially for humans and other animals, we have a certain body temperature that our body has to stay at so our cells can stay healthy and continue to do what they need to do. Okay, so we have to maintain that. That's why when we get too cold, our body lets us know that. Okay, and the last thing we're going to talk about is levels of organization. So like I said at the beginning, cells are a basic unit of structure and function. So we are made up of cells. That's our smallest part of a living thing. When we take a group of cells and we put them together, they're going to start to perform a job. That's called a tissue. Okay. Then when you take that tissue and you put groups of tissues together, they're going to perform a specific function. That's an organ. And then the last one you can probably guess is your organ system. It's a group of organs that perform a complex function. So your digestive, circulatory, skeletal, respiratory, those are all organ systems that we have that help us um, perform and function what we need to do. Okay, so how we are organized, a living thing. The basic part is we are all made up of cells. When those cells start to come together and work together, we've got tissues. So for example, let's take our circulatory system. We take a circulatory system and break it down. That's the organ system. The organs of the circulatory system are our blood, our blood vessels, okay, like arteries and veins. Tissues are what make up those blood vessels and our blood, the arteries and veins. And then the cells that make up the circulatory system is a red blood cell. If we take the digestive system, the organ system, it's made up of organs like our stomach, our small and large intestine, our esophagus. And then all those organs are made up of tissues that make up the stomach, the large and small intestine. And then the cells, um, we have certain uh, cells that make up the digestive system. So that's the level of organizations for our body system. Okay, so let's recap. In order for uh, something to be classified as living, we need to be made up of cells. Living things have to have chemicals. They, have to, they use energy. They can grow and develop, and they can reproduce. Those are the five major requirements needed in order to classify something as living. If something does not have those five requirements, it cannot be classified as living.